The villagers sat in silence, eagerly anticipating the storyteller's tale. The storyteller elevated his voice, beginning the story. Tariro's heart raced as she slipped into the palace garden. Though her marriage to Tendai was acceptable, she yearned for something more. The love of her life awaited beyond the palace grounds, and she needed to reach him swiftly before anyone discovered her absence. The villagers exchanged glances, uncertain whether this was a new story or a continuation. A murmur rippled through the crowd, and one villager hushed the others with a gentle, shush. Undeterred, the storyteller continued with a smile. From the shadows, a disheveled woman emerged, her face hidden beneath a hood. The mysterious figure seemed desperate to communicate, uttering words that Tariro could not understand. I'm sorry, but I cannot stay, Tariro pleaded, her urgency evident. I'm in a hurry. She attempted to brush past the hooded woman. How did you get onto the palace grounds anyway? Tariro questioned, her eyes narrowing in suspicion. A sudden metallic clatter echoed through the stillness of the night as a knife fell to the ground. Tariro's eyes widened in shock as the hooded woman, seemingly desperate for a conversation just moments ago, revealed a hidden menace. A struggle ensued, and in the chaos, Tariro felt a searing pain in her chest. A gasp escaped her lips as she realized she had been stabbed by the very woman she could hardly recognize. The world seemed to slow down as if time itself were reluctant to witness the unfolding tragedy. In the fading daylight, Tariro's consciousness began to slip away, leaving behind unanswered questions and the echoes of a scream that lingered in the garden's hallowed silence. You are watching the tales of the savannah. Subscribe and be part of the tribe. Now, let's get back to the story. Chapter 2 a few weeks before this incident, Tariro's heart had sank like a stone in the river when her father, the king, delivered the unexpected news. Her hand had been sought in marriage by the prince of a neighboring kingdom, a union forged for the sake of peace and diplomacy. She had always known that the day would come when she would be wed for political reasons, but the reality hit her with a swiftness she had not anticipated. Thank you, father. This is great news, she managed a smile, masking the turmoil within. The queen, pleased with the apparent compliance, beamed with satisfaction. Tariro, however, couldn't shake the feeling of being a pawn in a game beyond her control. She excused herself from the royal presence, her mind a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. Her thoughts, however, were not solely occupied by the impending marriage. Kuda, her secret boyfriend of many years, occupied a prominent place in her heart. Kuda hailed from a wealthy family and Tariro had dared to dream that their love could triumph over political alliances. She sought him out, the weight of her predicament heavy on her shoulders. Kuda, already aware of the news, awaited her in their secret meeting spot. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Tariro and Kuda found solace in each other's company. The fading light mirrored the dimming prospects of their love. They sat in shared silence, watching the sun's descent, each moment weighed down by the unspoken understanding that their time together was slipping away. Chapter 3 The wedding preparations unfolded with a swift, almost ruthless efficiency, and before long, Tariro found herself standing face to face with a young man she hardly knew. As she uttered promises she wasn't sure she could keep, a smile was plastered across her face on the day of the ceremony. Now a married woman, she faced the challenge of making something meaningful out of a union forged for political convenience. The palace corridors buzzed with rumors of Tendai's great love, a girl Tariro could never hope to compete with for his affection. Whispers reached Tariro's ears about Tendai frequently being seen with this mysterious woman. Tariro was devastated. One day, Kuda visited the palace on official business, providing Tariro with a glimmer of hope. Tearfully, she confessed to Kuda, I cannot do this anymore. Tendai is in love with another, and I just cannot stand being here. I want to be with you. Please, save me. Kuda had secretly hoped that Tariro would be miserable in her arranged marriage, but seeing her fall apart devastated him. Run away with me, Kuda suggested. The idea startled him as it escaped his lips, but he couldn't bear to see Tariro trapped in a loveless existence. Where would we go? Tariro asked, a glimmer of hope flashing through her eyes. Kuda, determined, replied, far away from here. I have some gold coins saved up. We can start over. I cannot promise you a palace, but I can promise you a life worth living. Tariro embraced Kuda, grateful for his companionship and the love they shared. Be ready. I will come for you on Friday. Meet me at the edge of the palace garden. I will have my horses ready.
With those words, the determined young man left, ready to set their escape plan into motion. Chapter 4 Friday, the day of escape, loomed on the horizon, each passing minute stretching like an eternity for Toriro. In an unexpected turn, Tendai her husband had become more affectionate, leaving her puzzled and wondering if he had somehow uncovered their plan. As the sun began its descent, on the fateful day, Toriro seized the opportunity to instruct her servant that she would be strolling the garden alone that evening. Quickening her pace as she entered the shadows of the trees, she felt the anticipation building. At last. Freedom awaits just beyond those trees, she mused. A sudden interruption shattered the evening. An unfamiliar female voice pleaded for a minute of Toriro's time. Startled, Toriro faced a hooded woman with concealed features. I'm sorry, I'm in a hurry. How did you get onto the palace grounds? Toriro questioned, her senses on high alert. Please, Toriro, the woman begged, desperation in her voice. Before Toriro could react, a metallic clatter echoed through the stillness, and a knife fell to the ground. Panic seized her as a struggle ensued. In the chaos, the blade found its mark, piercing Toriro's heart. Blood spilled, staining her regal gown, and footsteps echoed away into the night. Toriro. Toriro, a familiar voice called out. Kuda emerged from the shadows, his voice trembling as he took in the scene before him. Shocked and unsure, he instinctively pulled the dagger from Toriro's chest. Suddenly, a scream pierced the evening. Toriro's servant had discovered the tragic scene. No, I can explain, Kuda pleaded, attempting to calm the terrified servant. Realizing that everything had gone wrong, Kuda vanished into the night, the dagger still clutched in his hand. The once promised escape had turned into a nightmare, leaving behind a wounded princess, a mysterious assailant on the loose, and a lover on the run. A collective gasp echoed among the villagers. What's going to happen to Kuda? inquired a young boy, his face marked with concern. That's a tale for another week, replied the storyteller. Disappointment murmurs circulated through the crowd, but they appreciated the unfolding narrative. The storyteller left them with a teaser. If you want to catch up on this storyline, watch, A Love to Die for One. Dear tribe members, if you enjoy the storyline, please share your thoughts in the comments section. If you're eager for more of the characters portrayed in the story, express your interest in a continuation of the story. Perhaps you'll have the chance to encounter your favorite character once again, in the savannah. Thank you for watching our story, A Love to Die For, and we hope you enjoyed it. What lessons did you draw from this story? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and be part of the tribe. Thank you for watching, The Tales of the Savannah. We will see you next time, in the Savannah.